Hi, I'm Craig, and welcome back to another on the road video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. Stop. Before beginning any repair, always be sure to disconnect the power to the appliance. It is also recommended to test the outlet for the proper voltage. What we have here is a GE Harmony dryer. Uh, the customer complaint is that it's taking too long to dry. When I first came, I noticed that the airflow was good. Everything seemed to be working fine. You'll notice that there are two motors inside this dryer. What I've seen is an hour into the, into the cycle, the motor that controls the blower wheel stopped working, preventing it to flow outside of the house. This was causing the dryer to short cycle. So today we'll be replacing the internal motor that controls the blower wheel. The tools you will need for this repair is a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver, and a half inch socket. To start this repair, we will have to remove the control panel. It is held on by four Phillips head screws. Once you remove these, you will push the control board back and up in order to release it. It will be holding on to three Molex connectors. Remove these to set the control board aside. Now that you have the control panel removed, go to the back. There are two Phillips screws right here. Remove those two so you can take off this metal panel and have better access. Slide this up and lay that on the back. Your back plate is down. Now to remove the top portion, there are two Phillips screws holding this in. Once the screws are removed, for this, you pull up on both corners and then slide it forward to gain access to the top bracket. Now that that is removed out of your way, you'll see two Phillips screws on the back corners. You want to remove these to get rid of these plastic brackets and lift up the top plate. So once you have those off, you push on the brackets to remove them. The brackets are removed. Now to take off the top bracket, just lift up. Be careful, it is sharp and sit it out of your way. Now that the top plate is removed, make sure you unhook all the Molex connectors and go to your front door. There are three of them. And now you'll start to take off the screws. Start with the top two. Now we will work our way around to the front. Now that the top screws are removed, open the door. There will be four silver screws holding on the front panel, all Phillips. Now be careful, once all of these screws are taken out, the door will fall forward because of the weight. Now that you have these removed, pull forward and lift up to take off the front panel. Now that your screws are removed and the front plate is taken off, you'll see there are four screws holding this portion on. 
all Phillips again. Once these four screws are removed, take, to take this off, you'll notice that they are slotted and sitting inside of a slot. You want to lift up to release it from each side and put that out of the way. To remove the drum, you will need to undo the belt to take the tension off. There is an idler pulley that is behind this blower wheel attached to the motor that we are replacing. To get to this, you will stick your hand in the left side. Now you'll notice that the idler wheel is f fed with the belt going around it. You will have to pull the idler wheel to the left and feed the belt away from the motor in order to undo this. It can be kind of tricky because there is not a lot of room. Now, you'll be able to lift up on the drum and remove it from the cabinet. Next, to remove the blower motor, you will have to take it off of the blower wheel. I recommend using a pair of ice grips to hold on to the motor pulley that is on the back. While you take this portion of the bolt out, Now that you have that bolt removed, you can remove the blower wheel. First, there are two Phillips size screws right on the front here. Do this to take off the metal plate. Now, pull out on the blower. It can be stuck and you won't lose the bolt. There's nowhere for it to go. Tip it out and remove the blower wheel. Now to remove the motor, first unhook the wiring harnesses from the clip below and remove this Molex connector that's holding it on. Next, what you will need to do, there are two clips, motor mount clips, that are holding it in. You will need a flathead screwdriver to do this. There is a small ledge on the side. You'll use your flathead screwdriver to push down and pull up. Then do the same on the other clip. Once you remove these, you'll be able to lift up the motor. Now to take the motor off, once you have the mount clips off, you'll want to remove the blower housing. There are two Phillips screws that are holding it to the bottom of the dryer. Once you remove the bottom bracket screws, there are two screws inside the housing. They're holding it on to the motor bracket. You do not have to remove this to replace the motor, but I found it a lot easier once these are out. Oh, there's actually one more. There's three screws. this out and easily remove the motor. Now when replacing the motor I recommend putting the motor on and the clamps on prior to pushing this in. So pull that and set it aside. Okay you will notice that the motor has small slots here that correspond with the slots that are on the bracket. You will need to slide these in the correct places in order for the motor to fit properly. And it'll slide in. You will notice it will not be able to turn after it is in the correct spot. After that, get your blower wheel and feed in the shaft. Connect it back to the housing and replace your clips. 
when you replace these, you will have a slotted end as well as the end that we used for our screwdriver previously. You'll want to put in the slotted end first and push down and you'll hear it clip in. The same on the front. The front is a little trickier because you do not have a whole lot of room. But once you get it to bite, all you have to do is push down. And there we go. Now, take your motor harness, slide it into the clip, and reconnect the Molex. There's only one way for it to go on. It will clip when it is in there correctly. Once you have this in place, put back your three Phillips screws that held on the blower housing. Now secure the screws that were holding it to the bottom cabinet. Replace your blower wheel. Clean it off the best you can. If these get too much of a buildup on it, they will wobble around and make a knocking noise. Once that is in there, get the two placement pieces. First, you'll have the washer followed by the square bit. The square one can only go in there one way. Now, you'll want to replace your nut that was holding on the blower wheel. Hold on to the blower wheel and tighten this up. Make sure that it's not hitting either way. This one looks good. Now that that has been replaced, replace the front cover. You will notice that there is a small lip that goes between the bottom. Replace the two Phillips screws was holding on the cover. Once again, turn your wheel. Make sure you don't hear any noise. Also looks good. Now, when you replace the belt and the drum, when you slide it in here, first you will notice that you have two rollers that are on the back. When you slide the drum in here, I recommend sticking your arm underneath, pulling forward on the rollers because they can get pushed back to see that the, the rollers are underneath the lip of the drum holding it in. When you put the belt on, the belt will go around. You'll want to feed in your left hand and pull up the idler. You can hear how it has a belt switch inside that will turn the dryer off if the belt is broken. What you'll want to do is pull up on the idler. The belt will feed around the drum. The belt will go around this way so you have one end this way, one end going around. It will feed underneath and go around this motor pulley to keep this up and cause tension on the belt. Now that your drum is in place, you do want to make sure that it is the ribbed side that is going against the outside of the drum as well as what will fed around the actual motor. Um, after this is done, I recommend turning the drum a couple of times just to make sure that there is no tie up inside the belt, it's on there properly and it is in the right position before starting it up. Now before you replace this, you will notice that there are two rollers that are on the front side facing the drum. This is what the drum rests on. So you will have to get the drum clicked in here and around these rollers. I recommend lifting up on the drum from the inside as you're putting it in and pushing on it. Now that we have that in, you will slide in these slots. You'll have them on each side, on the top and bottom. This is what holds this in place. So simply put them in there and push down and do the same on the opposite side. Now this will be secured. 
After this is secure, you go ahead and replace the four screws that was holding this in place. Replace your front panel. You will see on the bottom, there are two square holes that corresponds with those that are on the bottom of the dryer. Simply slide that in. Once those are in place, when you push this back, press up on the top clips, you will notice that there is a small divot. After your door is in place, you'll want to connect the Molex connectors that hold the light bulb and the door switches. Now your front is secured, put back on the metal top. There are slides that hold that in place. You can only put it on one way. After this, you want to get your plastic strips that you took off previously. There are slides that go into these notch spots. Simply put those in and slide it forward. Do the same on the opposite side. Now replace the four screws that was holding all of this. Now set your lid on top. Make sure that the front comes out. There are two spots in the back where it can fall down. If that happens, all you have to do is lift up, put it in place, and slide it back to secure it. Then replace the two screws that were holding it on the back. Now that your top is secured, you'll want to replace the terminal block cover plate. You will see that there are two hinges and there are slots that it feeds into on the back. Once again, can only go in one way. You'll hear it snap in. Now replace the two screws you removed from it earlier. Your back panel is on. Replace the molexes that go to the control board. Be very careful so you don't snap any plastic while replacing these. Now to replace your control board, you will notice that there are also little brackets that slide in on the top casing. Make sure that those are secured, tilt it forward. slide those in. Now replace the four screws you got in the back. Now hook your dryer back up, plug it in, ensure that you have good airflow, you have no abnormal sounds, and this will complete your repair. Thank you for watching another quality video brought to you by appliancevideo.com.